Welcome back to Fox News on the Hill Live this Sunday morning. Virginia Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spamber is in her third term now, and she's also setting her sights on the state's highest office. In 2018, she became the first Democrat to win the seventh district seat, and she becomes governor. She was the, the first female in the history of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Joining us live this morning, Virginia Congresswoman Abigail Spamberger. Welcome back to On the Hill. Uh, you and I talked the, the day you announced, in the weeks since the, the landscape of the race has changed a little bit, Richmond Mayor LeVar Stoney has entered the race. Does that change any of your calculus now as far as how you were going to campaign throughout the Commonwealth? My motivation and my desire to serve the people of Virginia remains wholly steady and steadfast, and my focus continues to be uh, building out a campaign, speaking to voters across the Commonwealth, ensuring that people know that I am running for governor with a focus on supporting our schools, lowering costs, keeping our community safe and protecting our rights. And I will continue to do that all the way through November 2025. Let me ask you about some of the things that we saw just a couple of weeks ago in the election statewide, which determined control of the General Assembly. Republicans went in on a 15-week abortion restriction. Democrats ran statewide, said that that was an abortion ban. Democrats won. How much is abortion and women's reproductive health going to be a focus of your campaign? I think as long as politicians, be they in Washington or in Richmond, try to dictate uh, the choices that are available to a woman and her doctor, abortion and women's health care access will continue to be an important issue. As we are seeing right now in the state of Texas, there is a woman who is fighting in the courts for the ability to protect her life, protect her own fertility, um, and have the health care access that her doctors agree are, is necessary. Um, and so as long as we continue to see others trying to make decisions for women across Virginia and the rest of the country, uh, the issues of you know our fundamental rights will continue to be an important issue in elections. I want to talk to you about transportation. There was a major announcement this week about Virginia Rail, uh, some $700 million going to that effort. Uh, this area, the DMV especially, is clogged in congestion. How much is that project going to be a window into where your priorities are as far as transportation? Are, are, are you interested in more roads, more rail? How are you going to get people around the Commonwealth if you're governor? Well, I have been focused on issues of infrastructure and the challenges that the Commonwealth faces uh, since I start, first started working on the infrastructure bill. I am excited uh, that I voted for it, uh, we ushered it through, it became law, and now we are seeing the results. That means replacing and improving bridges across our district. This particular announcement of $729 million, that will do a couple things. It will um, rebuild the Long Bridge, so going across the Potomac, allowing people to travel from Virginia uh, into D.C. Importantly, for the I-95 corridor, it's going to add a third track of rail uh, in Spotsylvania, Stafford, and Prince William counties. This is incredibly important for those who might want to have the option to get northbound or southbound via Amtrak or VRE, uh, but as long as there is not, you know, that extra capacity of, of track, you know, there's some who continue to have concerns about reliability or timeliness. So investing in infrastructure that will give people choices. If you want to get on 95, fantastic. If you want to get on the VRE, fantastic. But in, in order to solve and address the issue of congestion, uh, certainly along the I-95 corridor, which runs through the heart of Virginia's 7th District, uh, providing options to people who need to make that movement for work, for pleasure, for fun with family. Uh, it's vitally, vitally important. And this is an investment in our community. Uh, this is an investment in our Commonwealth. And this is what investments in infrastructure can do. Congressman, I want to ask you about what's been going on the Hill right now as far as foreign aid. Obviously, the holdup on the Ukraine aid and the Israeli aid has opened up some, you know, differences both on the Republican side over Ukraine and on your Democratic side over Israel. Where is this going to land if two of these allies need this aid and need it now? So much of where this will land depends on 
the choice that Speaker Johnson makes. He's one individual person who gets to dictate what comes to the House floor. Uh, but I will tell you what needs to happen. What needs to happen is we need to pass a fulsome aid package that provides aid to our Ukrainian partners so they can continue waging a war against Russian aggression, a, whip, a, a war in defense of their own democracy and democratic principles. We need to have an aid package that recognizes the need for Israel, our ally, to be able to defend itself with the Iron right. Dome from Hezbollah and Hamas and their rockets. Right. It needs to be an yes. aid package that has substantial humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people who are caught yeah. in between this war and aid to our we border are, crisis. That's what we need to push for. Out, we're flat out of time. We're giving us the hard cancel here. Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Fox 5's on the Hill continues right after this.